welcome to week one of the Alchemy Cardigan Crochet Along. I'm Jess Copham and I've partnered with my friends at lovecrochet.com to create this four-part video tutorial and free pattern series. Each Monday for the next three weeks, we'll be sharing the next stage of the pattern along with a video tutorial to accompany it. You're going to want to be able to have easy access to the written pattern while you follow along with this video. So you can either choose to view the free pattern on my blog, which is makeanddocrew.com, or purchase the ad-free printable PDF from lovecrochet.com. The PDF will be updated each week to include the new stage of the pattern. And if you need support or camaraderie along the way, please come join us in our Facebook groups. The links to those groups, as well as both patterns I just mentioned, are right below this video. Now, while this pattern includes some intermediate techniques, the video tutorials are quite detailed. So even if you're a less experienced crocheter, I encourage you to give this a shot and learn some new crochet skills along the way. The supplies you need to make the sweater start with this yarn, which is Vanna Style Yarn by Lion Brand. And it's a category three yarn, which means it's DK weight. It's a little bit thinner than worsted weight. And it's nice and lightweight, so the sweater won't be too hot for the summer months. And you can grab this and all the other supplies I'm gonna mention here at lovecrochet.com. So we'll link that right below this video. You're also gonna need a size I crochet hook, so that's 5.5 millimeters, but more important than the size that I'm using here is what size you need to achieve the gauge that's listed in the pattern. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit more in a second. And then it's totally optional to cuff the sleeves of your sweater, but if you wanna do that, you're gonna need two buttons. These are three quarter inch buttons that are made of wood. You'll also need a measuring tape, a tapestry needle, and a sewing needle, plus some thread to match the color of your buttons. Checking your gauge. This is by far one of the most important things to pay attention to when you're crocheting or knitting a garment, so please do not pass this part over. It's really worth the 15 minutes it takes to make a gauge swatch because this is what's gonna ensure that your garment fits correctly. So I've gone ahead and worked two swatches here just in some other colors so you could see what they look like. This is charcoal Vanna style and this is teal in the Vanna style line. And this is the same stitch that we're gonna use for the back of the cardigan. So right after this section, we're gonna learn how to work this stitch. But instead of starting it with the total number of chains you need for the back, as we're gonna learn in the next section, I would rather have you start a little swatch with 24 chains and then practice this stitch in a smaller square. So this is 24 chains chains and this is 11 rows tall and this square will be the perfect size for measuring your gauge. So once you have your swatch created you're going to want to measure how many stitches are going across in four inches and you'll want to do this in a few different places on your square just to be sure but there should be a total of 14 stitches in four inches. So if you are finding that you have too few stitches or too many it might be time to try a different hook size. And similarly, we are going to measure vertically to see how many rows are in four inches, and there should be seven and a half rows. So you wanna count those up in a couple places on your swatch, and as long as you have seven and a half rows by 14 stitches, you are good to go and you're ready to move ahead in the video and create your entire back section. Now, if you're finding that you have too few of stitches here, that means that your stitches are too big or too few of rows, they're too big. So you need to decrease your hook size and then try another swatch. If you're finding that you have too many stitches in four inches or too many rows in four inches, then you need to increase your hook size a bit and try the swatch again. There's also sometimes a chance that you may be correct on the horizontal gauge, but the vertical gauge might be off. Say you need your um, rows to be a little bit taller to get seven and a half per four inches. Then you're gonna just wanna try maybe pulling your yarn up a little bit more to make each double crochet just a little bit taller. And that could be what allows you to meet the pattern gauge perfectly both vertically and horizontally. And I just say that because everyone crochets a little bit differently, so it's good to just kind of experiment with your own stitches and your own hook size to determine how you can meet the pattern gauge because that's what's gonna make you have a sweater that fits like you expect it to. So once you have a gauge swatch that's working, go ahead and move on to creating the back of your sweater.
So to get started here with the back, I have my size I hook, but more importantly than the size I'm using, it's the size you need to use to achieve the gauge that is listed in the pattern. So whatever size hook that is, we are gonna do a bunch of chains. And the number of chains you are gonna work depends on the size of sweater you're making. So be sure to check that in the written pattern for your foundation chain for the back piece. I'm working the size medium, so I'm gonna make 68 chains. And now that I've finished my chain, we're gonna work row one as double crochet all the way across in each chain. So I'm gonna skip the first three chains, one, two, three, and I'm gonna double crochet into that fourth chain from the hook. And this first three chains here, that's always gonna count as one double crochet for me. So we've got one and two now. And from there, I'm going to just double crochet all the way across, working one double crochet in each chain we've got here. And now I'm at the end of row one. I've worked all the double crochets, and because I'm working the medium, I have 68 double crochets. So you'll just wanna check the written pattern to make sure you have the correct number for the size you're making, because it's gonna be really important in the next row to have the right number of double crochets in this row. So for row two, we're gonna start with three chains, and that's gonna count as a first, the first double crochet, just like it did in the previous row. And often as we do with double crochet, we're gonna skip that first double crochet because this kind of counts as it. And then we're also gonna skip the second double crochet. So we're actually gonna be working our first stitch into the third stitch from the hook. And I'm gonna place a double crochet right in there. And this next part is the only sort of complicated part of this, of any stitch in this whole sweater. But you don't need to worry because I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. And once you get that, you're gonna be off to the races with this whole stitch pattern. So I've got my first double crochet and it's kind of going at an angle here because it's gonna form the first side of our X. And the second side is not gonna be worked in the front the next stitch as you typically would. It's actually gonna be worked back into this stitch which is behind the stitch we just worked. So in order to do that, I'm going to, we're working a double crochet, so I'm gonna yarn over like this, and I'm gonna work behind this first double crochet. So I'm going behind and inserting my hook from the top down to grab the yarn. So I'm gonna do that one more time from the front so that you can see it a little differently. I'm gonna yarn over, put my hook right behind that first stitch and then go from the top down into that second double crochet from the hook. So now I've just gone through the fabric just as I normally would. I've just pushed that first double crochet out of the way. So I'm gonna grab my yarn. Now I have three loops on my hook. I'm taking care just to make sure I pull it up high enough because it can get a little squished behind that first double crochet. And then I'm gonna yarn over and pull through and then yarn over and pull through one more time to complete the double crochet. So you can see here we have a little X and this is actually the wrong side of the fabric. So it'll look even better on the opposite side which is gonna be the side that faces out in your sweater. So let's try that a few more times. We're gonna work X's all the way across here, and I promise it gets a lot easier the more you try it. So we're gonna yarn over and work a double crochet, not in the next stitch, but in the second stitch from here. So we're always skipping one here to work that first post of the X. I've got that first double crochet, and now I'm gonna work behind it to complete the X. So I'm yarning over, and I'm going behind that X, and then from the top down, working into the skipped stitch. So I've got my hook going back through just like I would normally work on a double crochet. It looks just the same now. I'm grabbing my yarn and pulling it up to the height of the row. So I have three loops on my hook, yarning over and pulling through one, or sorry, pulling through two, and then yarning over again and pulling through two. So we're working, it's just like a normal double crochet. It's just we're getting this thing out of the way in order to work it. So again, I'm gonna skip the next stitch so that I can work that first forward leaning X leg. I got a double crochet in there, and then we're gonna work behind it again. So I'm yarning over. I'm gonna show you from the backwards way this time. 
in case maybe it's easier for some of you to see. I'm gonna yarn over here and then I'm gonna go right this way from the backwards way, it's underneath and back out to the back side of my fabric. So whichever way you find easiest to kind of dig in there and get your hook in the right spot, do that. I promise it, it's much faster once you get rolling a little. Let's do a couple more slowly. We're working the stitch all the way across. So I'm skipping one, double crocheting in the next stitch, and then I'm gonna work a double crochet into the skipped stitch we skipped. So I've yarned over, I'm going, because I'm coming in the backwards way, I'm going from the bottom up, grabbing my yarn, coming up. Now it looks like a normal double crochet and I'm gonna complete it just like that. Once more, we're gonna skip one stitch, work our double crochet, and then I'm gonna yarn over, go right behind that X, work from the top down. Whether you're working from the front like this or you turn it over like that, you're always going from the front of your fabric to the back, just like you normally would with double crochet or any other crochet stitch. You'd always go from the front to the back to grab your yarn. So you're gonna pull your yarn through and complete that double crochet. So now you can see it's starting to look like a series of X's and if you flip your work over, it's even prettier on that side. So we're gonna continue just like this all the way to the end of the row. So two stitches at a time, you'll be working one X. So let's keep doing that and I'll meet you at the end of the row. And as I come to the end here, I've got two stitches left for my last X and then the turning chain from when we started. So I'm going to work my last X in the final two double crochets. And then we need to place one last double crochet into that turning chain. And that's gonna sort of finish off the end and make it symmetrical with the other side where we began the row. So I'm just working into the space here and finishing with a double crochet. So you can check the written pattern for the number of X's you should have at this point, but as long as you started with the right number of double crochets, you should have the right number of X's. So for rows three and four, we are actually just gonna work the same thing we just did. So a row of double crochet and then a row of X's. So I'll show you real quick how to work into these X's. It's very simple. We're gonna skip that first uh, double crochet here because this is counting as our first double crochet. And then we're gonna work into each double crochet across. So we're starting then with the first edge of this X with a double crochet. And then I'm gonna work into the next uh, leg of the X with a double crochet. And then I'm just gonna continue like that, double crocheting in each stitch all the way to the end of the row. And again, I'm going to place a double crochet in the turning chain. We'll always do that because it counts as a stitch. And then for row four, we're gonna repeat the same thing we did with the X's. So it'll be a chain three, and then work a double crochet into the third stitch from the hook, and then go back and work a double crochet into that second stitch. And then you just work X's all the way across. So for the medium, I need to repeat this sequence one more time. So that's gonna be rows three and four. Then I'm gonna do a double crochet row and then a row of X's. And you can consult the written pattern for how many total rows you need to work in that alternating pattern for your size. But after we complete that little part, that's sort of the underarm area, and then we're going to extend this piece to shape the edge of the armhole and then move on to the shoulder. I promise it's a lot easier than it sounds. So here we are at the end of row three and just like I mentioned, we're gonna work a double crochet in that last leg of the X and then I'm gonna place one last double crochet in this turning chain because it counts as a double crochet. So that's the end of row three and now I'm gonna work for me because I'm working the medium, my last row of X's before I shape the armhole. So I've skipped two stitches there. I'm working into the third one with my first X and I'm going to continue just like that all the way down this row. And now as we're coming to the end or what would usually be the end of this row 
For me, that's row four. For you, it might be a different row depending on the size you're making. I would normally work that last double crochet into the turning chain. So I'm gonna do that, but instead of stopping here, we're gonna continue by working some chains up this way. And what that is gonna do is this will be the little part of the sweater that's underneath sort of your armpit. And then we're gonna build the back up this way so that this will be your back covering your shoulder blade. So this is what will form the armhole right here. So to do that, we are going to, for the size medium, we're gonna chain 30. And again, you can check out the written pattern. It's linked below. You can find it on makeanddocrew.com. And that's where you'll find out the exact number of chains you need to work for your armhole. But we're gonna work those here and then we'll turn around and continue with the next row. And once I've got those armhole chains, we're gonna proceed with the next row. For me, that's row five. And this is gonna be the first row of sort of the shoulder section. So I'm gonna skip the first three chains because this is gonna be a double crochet row. So we're gonna start just as we did in row one. So I'm working into the fourth chain from the hook, a double crochet. And then we're actually gonna just double crochet in each chain until we get back to the section that we were working on previously. And now I'm getting back to the section that we've already worked. And so I'm making sure my chain isn't twisted at all here. And I'm gonna work into that last chain, the first one we created. And then I'm just gonna hop onto our previous section and double crochet all the way across. So as you can see here, we're adding a new little shoulder piece, but we're continuing in that same pattern of a double crochet row and then an X row and then a double crochet row. So you should have the same number of stitches that you had before, whichever that was for your size, plus now the number of stitches you added for the shoulder. And at the end of this row, it would be a great time to count up all your stitches and just make sure you have the stitch count that you should, which is listed in the pattern in your first row of the, of the shoulder section. And now that we've finished that first row of the shoulder section, which is very hard to say, we are gonna work an X row. Your piece should look like this. You have the main sweater, and then this is where this is gonna become the upper back part that's gonna cover your shoulder blades. And for row two of this section, we're gonna work a regular X row, just as we have been all the way across and end at the top of the shoulder here. So just like we have been in all the other X rows, we're gonna skip the first three, I'm sorry, skip the first two stitches and work into that third stitch from the hook with our double crochet and then work back to complete the X. And we're gonna work X's all the way across this row, ending with a double crochet in that last stitch of the row. And here we are coming to the end of the row, so I'm gonna work my last X here and place the final double crochet into this turning chain from when we started with the extra chains in the last row. So here we are your extension should look something like this now. And our next job is to increase. As we go along right here, this is gonna form the slope of the shoulder. So you'll see here's the armpit down here, and we're gonna add just a little bit of height to curve nicely with your shoulder. And I know that might sound intimidating to shape a shoulder. There's so much alliteration going on here, it's really hard to say. Um, it might sound tricky, but it's gonna be a lot easier than you may imagine. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to increase, and then you're gonna do that for a few rows depending on what size you're making. So there's gonna be a repeat of an increase row, which is always gonna happen on your double crochet row, and then you're gonna work a completely normal X row. So the increases are always on the double crochet rows. And you can consult the written pattern to know exactly how many sets of those repeats you need to make to increase the correct number of stitches for your size. So here's how we're gonna increase. We're gonna chain three. And then typically when we were working these rows of double crochet, we were working into this second stitch from the hook right here. So we were skipping that first stitch because it's double crochet. But on these increase rows, we're actually gonna work into that first stitch. So that's not typical for a double crochet, but that's what we're gonna do to increase. So I'm gonna put a double crochet in that first stitch, 
and then I'm actually going to put one more in that first stitch. So we've increased now by two stitches and then we're just going to carry on as we normally would for a double crochet row. So I'm going to double crochet in each double crochet all the way to the end of the row now. And as you can see, what that does is it makes that slight incline. So we're going to keep shaping that going up like this. And then we'll work a bunch of rows just even with no increasing to form sort of the middle of the back where your will be below your neck. So in order to do this, you're going to work this increased row here, double crochet all the way to the end of the row and work a regular X row coming back. So that's like kind of one set of increasing there. And then you're going to do another increase row by doing this exact same thing where you double crochet two into the first stitch. And then you'll work another X row just as you normally would. So the increases, as I said, always happen in the double crochet row. And you can consult the written pattern to know exactly how many times you should increase before you just work in even rows for the middle of the back. So I'm gonna set you free to work as many of those increased rows as you need to. And then I'll meet you back here to talk about the middle of the back, which is very easy. All right, now that you've worked all of your shoulder increases, it should look something like this slope. And again, the sizing may be a bit different, but this is kind of the angle that you should be seeing because you're gonna have increases every other row the medium has three increases. And then I wanted to show you what it's gonna look like. I've worked ahead a little bit here and you're gonna have a solid section of no increases or decreases, which is just the same thing you worked down here at the beginning of the um, little indent for the side of the sweater. So once you've finished your increases here, you're gonna work regular rows of double crochet, alternating with regular rows of X's, no increasing or decreasing across for the middle of the back section. And the number of rows you work for that is just dependent on, again, on the size. So check the written pattern to know exactly how much of that you should work. But our next step is gonna be now to decrease over here to mimic the same angle right here for this side of the shoulder. So we're gonna, instead of increasing as we did here, we're gonna decrease over here. And then again, we will replicate this little indent so we have a completely symmetrical sweater back. All right, so now that you've finished your middle back section where you didn't increase or decrease at all, it's time to decrease to mimic the shoulder slant that happened here on the increase section. So in order to do that, we are going to work our double crochet rows and decrease by two stitches at a time. If you remember, when we were working the increases, we increased by two stitches at a time. So now we're gonna do the opposite of that on our double crochet rows, going down the shoulder slope, and the X rows are gonna stay exactly the same. So to begin this decrease row, I'm gonna chain three just like we always have at the beginning of a double crochet row, and then we're gonna work our decrease stitches over the next few double crochets. So we're gonna skip this right here, which is our first double crochet. We've skipped that all along. And then we're gonna work two decrease stitches over the first and second X's. So if you've never worked a decrease before, it's uh, in the pattern called double crochet two together, DC two TOG. And to do that, I'm yarning over and almost working a double crochet, but instead of yarning over and doing my completion of the double crochet, I'm gonna keep that loop on my hook and then I'm gonna work into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through. So now I have three loops on my hook and that's when I'm gonna yarn over and finish them all off. So you can see what that does is it eliminates one of those stitches and to the top, it just looks like we have one double crochet there now. So we've eliminated one, we need to eliminate one more so we're gonna repeat that decrease here by yarning over, pulling through, almost completing our double crochet, but keeping that loop on the hook. And we're gonna do that one more time, where we yarn over, pull through. Now we have three loops on our hook, and that's when we're gonna finish our double crochet. And you can see we now have this turning chain, and then we have two double crochets. So we've effectively eliminated one X. When we work back the other way, we're gonna have one fewer X than we did before. So to complete this row now, we're just gonna finish it off in straight double crochet. And if you remember for the back section, we alternated an increased row of double crochet with an increase uh, with a regular row of X's. So that's the same way this 
uh, opposite shoulder is going to work. So after we finish this decrease row, we're going to work back in a regular X row. And I'm going to meet you back here and we'll talk about how to work in these last couple stitches just to make sure there's no confusion about how to work into the decreases. So finish off your row of double crochet, work an X row coming back, and I'll meet you right back here in this corner. So here we are coming to the end of our X row. Here's our decrease that we just worked right here. And I'm going to show you how to work into those decrease stitches. It's very straightforward. Um, if you look at them from right here, they kind of look like a, a blob. <laughs> but if you look from up above, it's very clear that we have that turning chain as well as two double crochet stitches from our decrease. So we're going to work an X into those just as we have been where we skip the next stitch and work a double crochet into the following stitch and then we'll work backward behind that double crochet into our skipped stitch to complete the X. So we've got one more X here or we've finished our last X and that should be one fewer X's in this row as in this row because we're starting our slope down. So I'm going to finish off this row with a double crochet in the turning chain just like we always have and from here it's time for me to work another decrease double crochet row and you can check out the free written pattern to know exactly how many of these sequences of a decrease row followed by an X row you should work for your size. For me I'm making a medium so I need three total decreases followed by three total X rows. So this is going to be my second decrease here. So we'll just practice it right here together and then I'll go ahead and let you work all your shoulder shaping rows and we'll meet back here to finish off this section with the little um, armhole indent. So there's my decrease and I'm going to proceed here finishing off this row in regular double crochet and then follow it up with an X row and we're going to repeat that as many times as you need to for the size you're making. And now here we are, we've completed these shoulder decreases here. So that's alternating a row of double crochet decrease with an X row um, a few times, depending on your size. So now I'm at the point where I need one more double crochet row with no decreases in it to make it symmetrical at this side. Because if you remember, when we increased from this little armhole, we made that chain up here and then we double crocheted in it. So we're making the equivalent on this side. We're just going to double crochet that entire row and then we'll come back and add the little armpit extension. And now that we've finished that last double crochet row of the shoulder decrease section, we are going to be working just in this smaller section here because we're going to make the little part that's going to go underneath your arm. So from here I have counted 66 stitches and put my marker in the 66 stitch from where my hook's going to be over here. And so this is the bottom of the sweater. Here's the shoulder. I've got 66 stitches going here. And that number is going to be different depending on the size you're making. So check the free written pattern to know exactly what stitch you should put your marker in. But when I count that, I'm counting from the very first stitch right here, one, two, three, all the way here. And this is the 66th one that my marker is in. So what we're going to do now is work a row of X's where we end with our last double crochet in this marked stitch. And then we're going to turn it and work the rest of our rows in this smaller section. And here we are coming upon that marker. So I'm going to work my last X just like I normally would in those last two stitches before the marker. And then the marked stitch, like I said, is going to get our last double crochet of this row. And then we're going to be done with this one. The rest of the stitches are going to stay unworked because that'll be where we put our sleeve eventually. So I worked that last double crochet here. We're going to follow this up with a row of double crochet, no increasing or decreasing. And it's just going to be worked between here and the bottom of the sweater. So all of our stitches now are going to just stay in that section. And you have a few more rows to work of straight um, double crochet and X rows alternating. And the number of rows, again, depends on the size you're working. So just check out the written pattern to know exactly how many to work. But I'm going to go ahead and work a double crochet row here. And then a few more alternating rows ending with a double crochet row. Everyone should end with that. And that should make the edge of this side of your sweater identical to the edge on the opposite side. So let's go ahead and wrap that up and we're going to be totally done with the back of the sweater. 
All right, hopefully you're well on your way to finishing the back of your alchemy cardigan and you've already learned most of the skills you're gonna need to complete this sweater. Now it's just a matter of practicing them in the upcoming stages of the pattern. We'd love for you to share your stitches on Instagram using hashtag alchemycal. And please be sure to tag us so we can see what you're up to. And remember, if you've got questions, we've got answers over on Facebook. So feel free to join us in those groups that are linked right below this video. Join us next week to learn how to make the front two pieces of your cardigan. And until then, happy crocheting.